Hello, everybody. My name is Derek. I am a producer at the Performance Matters podcast. Just to give you a heads up, this is a bit of a shorter episode than you're used to. We had some technical issues in the connection between our host and our guest, but we're going to make it up to you. We've got another episode dropping next week during an off week, so we hope you tune into that one. Without further delay, here is Michael Teal, host of the Performance Matters podcast. Hey there, listeners. Mike Teal, host, GP Performance Matters podcast. I'm a little lost for words right now because I just had a conversation with Matt Donovan. And um, yeah, if you're not familiar, he is the chief learning and innovation officer for GP Strategies, the world's leading talent transformation company, BT Dubs, (laughs) you know, hash brown BT Dubs. Listen, we were talking about the future of corporate academies. And I got to say, listen, whenever I talk to Matt, I walk away feeling like my head is a sea monkey that's been dropped in the water. I mean, the things he talks about, it's so future thinking. (laughs) It's like you want you want to take this pod, you want to back it up, flip it and reverse it and listen to it again, because there's so much good information here. He's talking about the future of corporate academies. There are so many juicy little nuggets in here that you're going to want to listen to. I can't wait for you to check it out. Have a listen. Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Welcome to the Performance Matters podcast from GP Strategies, your workforce transformation partner. In each episode, we'll interview industry experts and explore best practices and innovative insights to help your organization improve performance. Hello and welcome to the Performance Matters podcast. I'm your host, Michael Teal. And today we are talking about the future of corporate academies. Here with me to really discuss this future trend forward topic is our very own Chief Learning and Innovation Officer, Matt Donovan. Matt, thank you for joining me on Microsoft Teams today. As always, great to be here with you. Uh, One of my favorite topics and uh, definitely one that our Clients are often talking about us saying, what's the latest and greatest in academies and the approach that we're taking towards those. So it's a great topic. Excellent. Excellent. And, you know, I I can't help but think of it since I'm a child of the 80s. I always think of police academy uh, when I hear this name, (laughs) corporate academy. So hopefully we're not going to go down that level. No, it it will not be (laughs) police academy at all. Very few references to that at all. (laughs) Proctor. I mean, I'm just saying if anyone caught that one, I'll be very impressed. (laughs) Go around, go around. All right. So Matt, we're talking about the future of corporate academy. So before we get started, please define what a corporate academy is. No, I think it's a great question because, you know, as I've, um, experience throughout the years, the term academy has kind of uh, cycled in and cycled out. And right now it's definitely a very popular term. But but when we talk about a corporate academy, it's a body of of instruction or a learning experience that helps prepare someone for a job or a role um, in an organization. So for example, we work with a lot of customers to create, for example, a marketing academy. And a marketing academy would help build up the capability of marketing expertise in an organization for every everybody from say a marketing associate to a brand manager. So you may have a a marketing academy that would then help enable those folks to do their jobs in the end. Okay. Can you just share from your perspective, what is the current state of corporate academies before we look to the future? Where are we at right now? Well, and I think one of the things, so it is along a maturity curve and how we're embracing more modern learning trends as we're going to it. So I'd say the current state is is one of the 
more legacy views, so to speak, is when you look at your academy as kind of a traditional content driven academy. So it's got like a 100 level, a 101, a 102, kind of like a traditional college syllabus where you have a progression of content and I go through my 100 levels, my 200 levels, and it kind of progresses me through. There's, there's a very, and it's very content centric and it's very structured on that, um, but it doesn't always take you to that final step of how do I actually do the job? So that's, definitely one thing is giving a nod to the future that we'll look at and talk a little bit more about but you know very traditionally syllabus focused content structure um you know where you're trying to bring in large masses of folks through a consistent experience all the way through okay and then what are you seeing in your crystal ball as the evolution then of the corporate academy well, I think, you know, for the evolution of the corporate academy, there's probably three dimensions that we are having, and, and I think the top three at least. And I think one is a, a tighter connection towards the evolution of the dialogue around skilling. So there's been a lot of discussion in, in the industry around skilling, upskilling, cross-skilling, reskilling, and how do we create a skilling infrastructure that enables us to build roles and functions and jobs predictably off of that. So one of the things is being able to really tie in to a skills taxonomy or a skills ontology that an organization may have. But it's not enough to just stop there. It's it's also bringing in that, that last mile challenge, which is looking at the work itself, the work outputs, the work products that are being done. So not just what are the skills that I need to be a marketing associate, for example, but what do I also need in terms of the work products? So as a marketing associate, what are the types of work deliverables that I have to create? So if I'm a brand manager, for example, switching to a brand manager, you know, can I create a an effective, successful brand plan as a as an example of an output? So everything in the academy should reflect the skills that roll up in order to enable a brand manager, but also in the end, being able to uh, allow them to actually do the job, the function of being a brand manager. Very interesting. So it sounds like there's a much sharper focus on truly as we say here performance matters right in terms of taking the skills but making sure you can truly be competent and successful at the job right yeah absolutely and i think that's really working with an organization to know what does a good brand plan look like for our organization what is successful what has been successful and then it kind of ties into as the environment changes and maybe what needs to be in a brand plan may change due to environmental changes strategic shifts how do you then make it so that the structure of your academy can kind of flex with that flow as that you may not need to go back and adjust some of the underlying skills but how do you actually create a brand plan today tomorrow and in the future may change you don't need to be able to update that but that last step around the work is really what allows it or moves it from just what I would consider passive knowledge to active application and really be able to kind of change the behaviors and drive impact and results in the field. So that first hmm. one is really tying around the skilling approach. You know, just listening to you, Matt, I also am getting a sense that there's a shift of kind of taking training and this idea of training and taking it out of the corner where it's just a a fringe compliance element in making it a more active part of the business. So is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. It is linking it back to the business and the frontline work that folks are really doing. Correct. That That is one of those things. So we're not just being like, and this has always been kind of one of the, the questions about, you know, higher ed institutions. They They fill their, you know, graduates with a lot of knowledge, but they don't know how to do a job. You know, it's like accounting graduates. They used to bring <laughs> accounting graduates out of out of college, and then they bring them in and they say, "We're going to teach you how we do accounting here." Wow, yeah, that's that's a major shift. So, what else are you seeing in your crystal ball? I'm imagining you having that in your hands right now, and you're doing the future visioning here. So, what else are you seeing? So, I think two other things is is what is the learner experience through the academy, and kind of going back to what we talked about before. I'd say legacy or traditional approaches have been very content centric. I'm going to sequence the content. This is how I want you to take it from beginning to end. 
what we're seeing in designs now is we're actually driving it so that it is more personalized, more aligned with where they're going. Um, the learners are taking a much more active role in the experience. So they need to define and identify what they need to learn in order to be able to do it so they can actually become active participants in the academy. And they'll go through that not by themselves, but often with others. So being part of social collaborative learning groups is also a big dimension of what we're seeing in the space as well. So this is these are that learner experience is really shifting from a content centric to a learner centric where they are coming in, they're taking accountability for the journey, they're being engaged with it, and then they're being asked to have authentic and what I would say achievements. So the ability to kind of create demonstrable outputs that can be evaluated, provided feedback on it. So it's not just, hey, did you learn this knowledge, but how will that apply to doing something relevant in the field as well? So Matt, I know your time is precious. If you had one final thought on this future and the, the trends of corporate academies, what would it be? Well, I mean, I think you know, it kind of brings up that third dimension as well that I would talk about is that we we think in more creatively on how we're creating the content for these. So historically, when we started in Academy, we used to think that we used to have kind of created all from scratch, but now we're really looking at bringing in a range of content sources so that now you're actually having some user generated content from inside the organization. You're buying some stuff that's unique in the space. Um, you may be able to open source some of the content topics, for example, to be able to come in. So it's not an absolute build or buy binary decision that it used to be. Now you have actually a variety of ways to kind of bring in the content. So you're almost curating a, a learner experience that's held together by performance oriented outcomes, activities, achievements, um, but being able to source that content from a variety of ways. So I think that we have more opportunities for creatively uh, creating great learning experiences in these academies, driving to those performance outcomes and really doing it in a very much crowdsourced or multi-sourced way to be able to do it rather than just having to feel like, well, I'm limited to preset content as good or as weak as it is. We're kind of fixed with that. We actually have ways to kind of fix those challenges. Matt, thank you so much for sharing your insight today on this topic. We do appreciate having you on the pod. Thanks. It's been great being here with you and look forward to future conversations. The Performance Matters podcast is brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable. You can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com. 